everyone, Mango7 Roll here. How we doing today? Welcome to another episode of Epic 7. Today we're going to do a top 10 list of sorts, and that's going to be related to potential units with all this new content that's coming up with the new TOA um, Automaton Tower LOL um, and so much more harder content. Hopefully, a lot of new units are going to be used. And uh, I just want to take a little bit to get a little comfy here. Like all the four on our chairs here on our table, we have Tamarin with her wonderful pillow. We have Dien with her wonderful pillow. And then we have Luna and Euphine with all of their pillows too. And we have me with our sponsor of the day, Hoop Home Goods. Uh, they're even pillow. Absolutely flippin' fantastic. I contacted them um, to try one of their pillows out and I actually bought an extra one myself because I love it so much. They're um, super amazing. I'll have a link in the description if you want to get one yourself. Um, I'm using the Eden pillow specifically. Got like an infused cooling technique sort of thing. You know that mumbo jumbo. But it actually works and I've never had a pillow this nice before. I love it. This is the king size. I know you can't really see it but um, I also have a queen as well and I'm beyond happy with it. Um, I'm pretty sure Dien's pillow is uh, Coop Home Goods as well, so keep that in mind going forward. Anyways, check it out. Link description below. I love them. They kind of changed my sleeping pattern. Like I even noticed in my sleep cycle app, I sleep better now because of it. Uh, kind of ridiculous what going from like a Costco brand pillow to like a nice pillow does. Let's get into the video. The first thing I want to say getting into this video here is this could all be wrong. This is all completely out of my brain and kind of um, predicting what type of content we're going to get in the future. I've been mostly right about this sort of thing recently, so um, here's hoping I'm right again. So that said, this is not a tier list by any means. This is just units I think have potential in the future. Um, and I'll try to talk about maybe builds to build them, but in general, they're all going to be speed related. So keep that in mind. Um, so let's get into the list here. There's no particular order and you're gonna see a lot of CR uh, manipulators You're gonna see a lot of debuffers. You're gonna see a lot of buffers um, But mainly CR manipulation is what the story of this is going to be So the first thing before we even get started I just want to talk about a couple five stars that are already popular that are probably going to be especially better with stuff like this coming um, people like Cecilia, people like Iseria especially, I think Iseria is going to be nutso um, for like the big boss stages. People like Lulika that can be really defensive and offensive at the same time, and especially uh, who should, unless they completely sideswipe us, be the number one unit for all the harder boss stages, and that's Lytica. Lytica is bonkers. Um, Lytica gives the most important debuff in the game for content like this, which is uh, decreased speed. And she also has the 100% combat readiness decrease without fail. Um, lands every time outside of resistance, of course. She also has mischance, which is the second best debuff, possibly. Uh, this is kind of completely neuters any sort of enemy. Just absolutely insane kit so Lytica is going to be your friend and I really am sad for anybody who doesn't have Lytica because it should theoretically make things so much different um you could kind of say she's just like Wa, you know if you know what I'm talking about you know what I'm talking about just a lot better like she is better than Wa if that was even po uh, possible anyways let's get on to the next one um these are the ones that are mostly less popular some of them more um, but the number one-ish on the list is Chloe. I love Chloe to death. After all, Long live the queen! she's just so wonderful. But the most important part about Chloe is her magic nail. It's on a three-turn cooldown. And what this does, if you're not really familiar with Chloe, it adds basically a joker to every person's attack. So anytime anybody hits the target with magic nail, it basically adds Joker onto it, and that is bonkers. And the only reason this isn't good at this point is because um, every boss that lives long enough to make this worth it has some sort of dispel or a way to um, kind of counterattack the uh, the debuffs. So a good example of this is the uh, Abyss 90. 
having the dispel and then go nutso on you sort of thing with debuffs. Another example is Wyvern 11, where she should theoretically be great for, but um, with how many times the Wyvern dispels, it's just not really good enough IMO. Uh, and to top it off, she's got some decent single target damage, which is okay. But most importantly, she has another guaranteed stun, just in case stuff goes incredibly wrong. And also, anybody with a nail has a chance to be stunned as well every time they're hit, not just by Chloe, but by other people as well. This is a really good way to kind of mitigate damage and also add infinity damage and you have to imagine um when we get teams more than four people and we will get teams with more than four people how insane something like magic nail is going to do it's going to do more dps than any other unit i would say in the game right so next up let's talk about shuri i think shuri is one of those units that was ridiculous at the start of the game and kind of fell out because of his low base speed but he's got poison 30% chance on his skill one, which is really, really, really good. And he's also got infinity combat readiness increasing, you know, and this is just so helpful. The fact that he's also a ranger will help in sustained battles too, um, more so than a thief would, I believe. And um, just the constant CR increase from him is going to be invaluable. Think of him like your Verd, I'm guessing, without the speed lead. And next up. Our first kind of obscure one, I guess you could say, and that is Dingo Reno. Um, I've loved this guy for a while. He's just really cool. He likes to cook. He's a vegetarian, but he uh, cooks anything. And he's got some free dinner for us. And free dinner has a minus one cooldown on a five turn cooldown for the whole team. And that's really, really good. Anytime you get minus one cooldown or just decrease of cooldown on your team's skills is really great, especially when combined with an extra turn, so that lowers the cooldown of free dinner by one. Um, it also lowers the cooldown anytime an enemy dies, so if you kill an ad or something like that, maybe there's respawning ads, you can cycle through this so, so, so much faster. His other two points don't really matter too much, bleed and burn. Um, not really caring too much about this, but in general, the free dinner is going to be where it's at, but one of the big problems is he's a warrior, and warriors aren't the greatest, I think. Like, there's not too many really great warrior artifacts that I'm happy to bring in PvP. So I'm guessing just something like Joker is what you have to end up putting Dingo on. Um, but I do think he might have a place, I'm not sure yet, but if we get five-person teams, he should fit a spot pretty easily. But there might be somebody better for that. And on to more CR manipulation here. We're going to talk about Wanderer Silk. I actually Wanderer Silk uh, six-starred yesterday just because of her pillows too. Um, but her skill three is on a four-turn cooldown and it's got silence unhealable 100% of the time. And it also reduces combat readiness to zero. That is nuts. So, 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 so nuts. She also scales with speed, which doesn't really matter too much because your damage is not what you're worried about. Um, such an insane skill three, and again, when in combination with stuff like Dingo, that's down to like a three turn cooldown there, and then combination with Lydica, imagine having her and Lydica on the same team and Dingo. Ooh, ooh, that's spicy. And then we have automatic fire as well, which also decreases combat readiness with a chance to do it again. And the first one is bleed. I really wish this was poison because that would make her so much better, but I will take bleed. I do think she's in a fantastic spot, and I feel like we're going to see a lot of use out of her in the future. She's also light, so she's not going to get any um, bad matchups for his bosses or anything like that. And 112 base speed is not a bad place to be, if I don't say. This next one is one I'm not really sure about, but I thought I would mention it anyway. This is Assassin Sid. I'm also kind of sad because I don't have him, I just noticed now. But his skill 3 is a silence, which might end up being really useful and a 50% combat readiness reduction. Um, I feel like this is just a worse Wanderer Silk for this. Um, his skill two doesn't really matter at all, but his skill one is poison, so he's gonna add a ton more damage, 50% chance with Mulagoras. Um, so that's gonna help out too. His skill three is on a three turn cooldown too. And the important part about him is he's got 127 speed, 128 speed. Uh, so he's like 16, no, not 16, he's... Um, yeah, 16 speed faster than Wanderer Silk. So while he does a little less on his skill three, he's gonna do a lot more damage, I think, especially with poison. Um, and he's gonna be solid, I think. Again, I'm not really sure on him, but um, his base speed is just too much to, to overlook, I think. Um, next up is 
one of the popular units right now. If not one of like the top three popular ML4s right now, that's Oxlots. We're going to use Oxlots a little differently than we use them in PvP. Actually, we're going to use them literally the exact same. We're going to boost people all day long. And Oxlots with this mana injection is up every single turn if you have the new Lulika artifact. So this means, um, imagine a team with Lytica, with Wanderer Silk, with Dingo, with Oxlots, and with like a support healer. You can consistently use your skill 3 with your two um, combat readiness decreasers. And whenever one is low, you can just boost up with Oxlots every single turn. So basically what Oxlots does is give somebody else on your turn like one and a half to two turns because sometimes their um, combat readiness bar is going to be full when yours is full too. So that's kind of a problem. But in general, his entire job is going to be using his skill two and actually nothing else. And you don't care about the attack increase. That's really not what you're worried about. It's all about the um, turn increase, though. Really, 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 really like this, and I think he's going to just be super spicy, but the problem with him is you're going to have to use him on manual. So I would personally only use him for, like, stage 100 or something like that, whatever the big boss ends up being. But he should be invaluable for that. And our last four-star, somebody I'm not really sure about, but I'm going to give her a little bit of a song and dance here because I think she deserves it. A Crescent Moon Rin is such a weird unit. She does so many unique things, and they all sort of do nothing. But you never know when an enemy in TOA has infinity buffs you want to steal. And if that's ever a case, if the stage is ever hard enough, like maybe TOA 100 does like defense buff and attack buff and speed buff and everything, and if you steal them, you have an easy time to go. If anything ever happens like that, you're going to be having a grand old time with Crescent Moon Rin. So I thought I would just mention her just in case, not to mention I just wanted to um, watch her dance for a little bit too. And let's get into the three stars here. And both three stars I'm looking at are um, specialty change ones. I did consider something like um, Rima, because Rima does have the minus one turn cooldown, but honestly, poor Rima, you know? Like, just poor Rima. He's trying so hard, but it's just not quite enough. Um, there was also Neminus, but I don't think just doing straight up damage is enough. Um, so that was why I kind of just ignored Neminus too. So let's look at the two. And they're the two I don't have. Uh, Righteous Thief Ruzid right now. Uh, he is really, really awesome. He has an insanely great skill set. But unfortunately, he's got 106 base speed, a little more with his um, Awakening thingies. But he has combat readiness increase and more importantly, speed buff. Um, and also a little bit of healing for himself. There's not many other units, especially on this list, that have speed buff. So I think he's going to fit pretty perfectly in that sort of group. Um, speed buff is invaluable, especially when you have a speed debuff on the enemy, which is what Lydica gives. And he also has decreased attack and decreased speed on his skill one. So that's a secondary form of decreasing speed. Really, really, really like this, and I'm really, really, really happy that he has this. Um, if you've never used Ruzid in a PvE setting, you should probably try it out. Um, I used Ruzid on my alt going into Abyss, and he was just so, 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 so nuts. So I think he's going to be just fantastic when it comes to the new content, and I think we're going to see him shine for sure over somebody like Judith. And the final one on the list, and again, we're, we're hitting a theme here. We have our boy, Rickerus, and this is for his skill 2 and basically his skill 2 only. His cheers on a 5 turn cooldown with Molagora, it also extends buffs. Has a 3 turn speed buff uh, with the extend duration, and it also decreases cooldown of skills by 1 turn. We all know how good Rickerus was before, and um, I think he's going to shine again with harder content coming. Um, unfortunately, his skill 1 and his skill 3 aren't the best. You know, they're they're okay, but they're they're not really what you want for this. So you're primarily using them for his cheer and almost nothing else. So maybe um, Dingo is possibly better at this point, but uh, Dingo doesn't bring speed buff. But then again, if you use your Ruzit, you have speed buff already. So that's just one of those things I wasn't sure about. I thought I'd mention because again, cheer is just ridiculously good. Um, ridiculously, ridiculously good for the type of content we should be getting. So yeah. That's it. Um, that was really fun. I, I love talking about potential units and potential things in this game, and I love theorycrafting. So 
hopefully you found this enjoyable. Again, um, this isn't really a guide of sorts. This isn't a, a top eight tier list of who's good. The units list that I think might have potential in the future. Maybe things that if they get a buff here and there, they might get a lot better. Just an overall fun list. And I kind of want to look back at this in a week or two uh, with the new content coming out. I guess like a month is probably a better idea. And see if any of these became usable. So anyways, uh, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe as always. Get comfy with some Coop Home Good uh, pillows in the description below. The Eden ones especially are awesome. And I'll talk to y'all later. Have a great day. Bye, everybody.